What's going on guys? Earlier today it was announced that Nikola Jokic will be named the uh, NBA MVP for the 21-22 season later this week. That is his second consecutive year winning the award. He beats out Giannis Antetokounmpo and Joel Embiid, who are the other two top contenders, uh, which actually leads to a crazy stat. Giannis and Jokic have now won the last four MVPs between the two of them, which I think is a testimony to just their, their skill level. They're continuing to improve upon what is really incredible and impressive performances already. And I know a lot of people are really upset about Embiid not getting it this year, specifically because these other guys have already won, and Embiid's season was that strong. Really looking at them side by side, um, I have the stats right here. I'm not going to like turn over and look and everything, but they're pretty close on. They played about the same amount of minutes a game. Uh, Embiid averaged a little bit more in points. Jokic had a better field goal percentage. Embiid had... Um, like less rebounds, less assists, Jokic a few more rebounds, a few more assists a game. Really though, it's pretty splitting hairs when you go down through the list. I think Embiid played four fewer games than Jokic, something like that. So not a lot to really compare and contrast to. I think the biggest thing is that voters probably dinged Embiid because of the team trading for Harden. I mean, honestly, I think if James Harden doesn't go to Philly, then Embiid probably walks away with the MVP award because Jokic did all of this and put in like some career best averages this year without Jamal Murray for the entire season and missing Michael Porter Jr. for most of the season, who are the two other max contract players on the team. So the fact that Jokic was able to carry this team into the playoffs, uh, despite all of the injuries, despite not having a lot of other big names, uh, despite inconsistent performances from some of the guards and, uh, you know, Aaron Gordon, um, who, players that found their groove at, at points in the season but weren't ever contributing at a high level. And I know the argument can be made the same thing happened with Embiid. They got nothing from Ben Simmons this year, traded for Harden, um, who looked good in a few games and then also did not look good in the games. And, you know, the, the role players in Philly were, were about the same. You had a breakout year for Tyrese Maxey. You had a strong defensive year from Matisse Seibel. It feels like there was a lot of, of arguments to be made on both sides. So it's hard to be mad that Jokic wins, but I understand the frustration from Philly fans and Embiid fans who thinks that who think that he deserved it. It's, it's tough, and this was a really competitive year. I mean, honestly, Giannis could have won it, and it would have been just as understandable. I, I think the fact that we're getting this many solid performances from from big men and from players in the center position is really a cool thing to see too um especially you know the last couple of years before this resurgence it was like the center position's dead long live small ball there's no place for centers anymore you had guys like like roy hibbert and andre drummond and greg monroe kind of just getting pushed out of the league for a little bit drummond not really but like greg monroe and and uh, roy hibbert those big men, Mozgov, Timofey Mozgov, um, you had all these players that were just kind of looking like dinosaurs. Like, hey, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what the future is going to hold. Then we see this resurgence with the center position, with these more athletic centers that are more involved in playmaking than maybe traditionally. And it's been, it's been great to see. It's really um, helped improve the overall watchability for basketball, for me at least. I don't know how other people feel. But, like, I enjoy it. I love watching Jokic and Embiid and, and those guys kind of just go to war with each other. I think even, like, a Bam Adebayo, he might be a little undersized compared to these guys. But I think the skill set he possesses at the center position is, is just incredible. Um, and the league's in a really good place. I mean, this was an award that was always going to be polarizing. I think there's a way to, to build Embiid's case without tearing down what Jokic did and vice versa. And for Giannis, too. I think there's a way to appreciate everything that these guys have done this year um, that doesn't involve bringing one another down. Because really, all three of them had incredible seasons. I am not mad at any of them winning. I think Jokic deserves it. Just as I would have said, I thought Embiid or Giannis deserved it, to be completely honest. This was one where it was like, this could truly go any way, and I would not have been mad. I think, um, obviously, the fact that Jokic is the only one of the three that is not still in the playoffs doesn't look great. Um, I mean, who knows? Maybe one day they'll go about 
coming up with a playoff MVP award, uh, like what they did with the bubble, or they'll wait and make the MVP an entire season award. But, I mean, it's a regular season award now. I don't see them changing that. The only thing I could think is maybe they would introduce a playoff MVP just to kind of, you know, have a contingency plan for these instances where, like, the MVP winner gets bounced in the first or second round. Um, I do think the idea of a team standing being part of what, like, decides it is is kind of a weird argument. I, I know that, you know, the Nuggets were a seven seed. They drew the Warriors in the first round, and they lost. So, you know, that's kind of just how it goes. Um, I don't think that that should ding the performance that Jokic put in this season because he basically kept them a playoff team. Without him, they don't make the playoffs. They probably don't make the play-in. It's, so to say, like, oh, they were a lower seed is just kind of... It, it's a little too dismissive for me. Um, I just I think we should focus more on the fact that, that really all three of these players had great seasons. Um, I think all three of them were, were justifiably in the conversation. Um, I'll be really curious to see when, once it's officially announced how the voting breakdown actually is because I think it'll be close. Um, I hope it's close at least. I think the argument will start to come if maybe it's Jokic in a complete landslide. And, like, then we'll hear, like, the, okay, wait, what's the bias going on here? What's the, I'm, I'm sure that'll come up if it's a, some crazy voting numbers. But I expect this to be super close because it was a really close, uh, really close race, close argued, like, tightly argued, close race this, this whole season. So I would imagine the voting is going to reflect that, um, probably specifically between Embiid and Jokic. I, I imagine Giannis will probably be third in the voting um but honestly who knows um maybe i'll hop on and do another video if it turns out that these voting numbers are absolutely insane but in the meantime i just wanted to hop on say congratulations to Jokic. i think it's very well deserved but i want to make sure that we also highlight the seasons that Embiid and Giannis both had because really it was a great year for basketball and to be able to witness these three players put on these three performances for an entire season was was absolutely a treat. Uh, so please let me know your thoughts on the MVP. Uh, if you think it's deserved, or if you would have liked to see one of the other guys win, or if you have an argument for someone else, like a Chris Paul, Devin Booker, Luka Doncic, some names that I've heard thrown around. Um, please, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.